Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord glory. Give him praise off your lips tonight. Amen. Out of your spirit, not from your flesh. Bless the name of the Lord on tonight. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Come on. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his what? Praise shall continually be in my mouth. That means in spite of what it feels like, in spite of what I may be facing, I'm going to continue to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to continue to make his name big. I'm going to continue to exalt the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Tired in my body, but yet I praise you. Come on, my mind been running ragged, but yet I still praise you. Trouble on the job, but God, I still give you glory. Can somebody open up your mouth today and magn hey, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name, what? Together. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless him in this place. We bless him in this place. Hallelujah. Anybody got dressed before you came? Anybody put on your garment of praise before you walked in the building? He said that we're going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with a praise. So bless the name of the Lord for he's worthy tonight. He is worthy tonight. He is worthy tonight. Families across this globe are going through so much. Mothers are burying their 15 and 16 year old sons and we can walk into the house of God and not give him a praise. Because we're in our right mind. Come on here, somebody. Our children, come on, may not be the best at what they are. But guess what? God is still perfecting them. Hallelujah. We still release salvation over their life. Hallelujah. We still decree and declare that they will magnify the name of the Lord. Their testimonies will win others to Christ. I don't know about you, but I prophesy over my seed because I need my seed to grow. Hallelujah, Jesus. My, 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 my. My heart go out to those mothers today. Been listening to the news and they're... A mother in our hometown is grieving because somebody shot and killed her 15-year-old son who had a bright future. Over foolishness. Foolishness. So my heart goes out to them today. Lord have mercy. So over some stuff his older brother did. So I, I thank God tonight. Could have been one of ours. Could have been one of ours. But I thank God that he took it another way. Woo! Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Father. So I give honor to God tonight, who's the head of our lives. Amen. Precious gift of the Holy Spirit and his son, Jesus Christ, amen. I give honor to God for all of you in your respective places tonight. I'm acting like I'm, not, I'm the one for the minister, but I'm not. <laughs> for all of you tonight in your places, amen. It's always a blessing to see your faces. Oh my God. It does a pastor's heart good when they can see that their members are hungry for more and more of God. Amen. So we thank God tonight for Mother Roan and Mother Brown. Amen. All of our elders, deacons, ministers, sanctuary workers, and even our babies tonight. We give God praise. So we have two amazing ministers that's going to come before us tonight. We are still in Gen uh, Galatians 5 and 22. We're covering the fruit of the Spirit. How many of you know how important it is? How important it is as believers, come on, as people that are professing Jesus Christ, that we have these fruits, come on, developed active and working in our lives at salvation we received them but after receiving them it's a work in progress somebody say it's a work in progress so it's up to individuals it's up to the believer as an individual you can't look for your husband to develop your fruit he might be a tool God used to help you develop one but he can't develop it for you. Nor your wives. Amen. 
So I thank God tonight that our fruit have to be matured, have to be developed and exercised. Amen. So I thank God tonight for Minister Melissa Green. Amen. She's going to come to our front tonight. And I'm sorry. Hold on one minute. I'm so sorry. Listen. No, 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 no. Can we give it up for our bishop? Our bishop on tonight, Bishop David Swenson, senior. That's my man. Yes, Lord. He mine. He all mine. No, no, no. He mine. He was yours. <laughs> Amen. Okay, amen. So we're going to go ahead and launch this off tonight. Amen. Get this, get this going tonight with Minister Melissa Green. And she's going to minister from the topic gentleness. Give her your undivided attention. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're sitting on one side. Okay, I'm going to just holler at the ones that's coming on this way. Praise the Lord for them, okay? Praise the Lord, y'all. Y'all look good. Y'all ready? Well, hello, Facebook and YouTube partners. We thank you for joining us tonight for this Power Surge Wednesday. Can y'all give it up for the Lord in here? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to turn around and shout. I'm not going to be a Tasmanian devil. I'm going to be a Tasmanian woman of God that's going to give this word to y'all so y'all can eat on it, okay? Because I know last week, you know, one of our men, our elders left y'all with something, okay, which is my husband. So let's give it up for Bishop again, Bishop A. Derby a. Swenson and his wife, Pastor Sabrina Swenson, and everyone in their respective places, and my husband on his way in his lateness, help him, Lord. Help all the ones that are on the way. Give them traveling grace. I'm just going to go for the Lord in prayer. I know First Lady prayed, but I always want to pray when you're on this pulpit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you right now for the day you have, you have given us, Father God. We thank you for this word that's going to be ministered to your people, Lord. We ask you to help their ears, Lord. Open up their ears, open up their hearts, Lord, that this word will fall on good ground, Lord. And, Lord, we are talking about the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, that need to be manifested in the time that we're living in right now, Lord. And that's perilous times, Lord. Lord, help our minds and our hearts to be ready for you, Lord. In the, in the, in the name of Jesus, we just give you glory. And we give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Right. So I'm just going to jump right on into this. And normally I have some liter literature for y'all, but I'm going to read from what I have. And I want y'all to just take some notes, please. And we're going to talk about gentleness. Somebody's deep, um, Deacon L. Sanders uh, put gent uh, Galatians 5 on the um, screen for me. And we're going to read this together because this is what we're talking about, y'all. And these fruits has to be manifest in the men and women of God in order for us to exercise this journey that we're on, right? So let's read this. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, which we already talked about, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control, and against such a, there is no law, okay? So let's go to, I'm going to open up with 1 Peter. Chapter 3, verse 4, and it's talking to the husband and wife, particularly the wife, all right? And it says, but let, but let your adorning be hidden personal in the heart. Let's go back to verse 3. Do not let your adorning be external. The braiding of the hair and the putting on the gold jewelry and the clothes that you're wearing. Not saying that you can't wear these things, but the Lord saying in this text, Let's read. Verse 4 says, But let your adorning be hidden, person, inner man, of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a quiet and, say, a gentle and quiet spirit, which is God's sight is very precious, which is in God's sight is very precious. So let's talk about, I'm going to talk about wise first. Because that's the way I can put it. Because I know I've been tried in the area of gentleness. I think we all can identify with the fruits of the Spirit where we're at with it. And where we need to be cultivated. 
you know, where we need to be pruned back so it can grow, right? right. The fruits of the Spirit is to manifest righteousness, right. right? The fruits of righteousness. So we can't do this without one or the other. They all work together, amen? amen. So let's do some definitions. Let's do a definition of gentleness. Gentleness, a disposition to be gentle. Now, what is disposition? It is your manner, the way you, the way you carry yourself, right? Disposition, having or showing a mild, kind, and tender temperance of character. So it's talking about your character, right? So when it goes on to say soft-spoken, soft-spoken, having a gentle, quiet voice or mild person. Now, let me start right there. Can we identify? Have we been mild and gentle today? Okay, the topic is producing gentleness. Let's, Lord, help us to produce gentleness in our life. Because it takes something to produce gentleness. You got to go through some things. In every one of these fruits, you're going to go through some things. You're going to suffer some things. Because if you don't suffer with Jesus, you're not going to reign with him. Now, I'm going to suffer with Jesus on this side. Because I want to continue this journey so I can go to another place. All right, we all we know what that is, right? Heaven, we want to get there. But we got to help this flesh. We got to deny this flesh, kill this flesh, subdue it. That means keep it under subjection. Kill it. Can y'all say kill the flesh? Oh, amen. Okay, let's go on. Kind. Kind, as this definition says, a group of people or things having similar characteristics. Affectionate. A loving, right? Are we affectionate as saints? Are we loving as saints? Are we loving one another? Because that's what the word tells us, to love one another like we love ourselves. So how can you be gentle? How can you be gentle? It says even temperance. Not easily annoyed or angry. Help me, Lord. I know why Bishop Swinson picked this topic for me. Because God is pruning me in the area of gentleness. Amen. That's why I start out with the wise. Yo, if you don't have a, let me say that, if you have a husband or wife that is not saved, right? Your chase conversation can save your husband or wife. So what's coming out your mouth makes a difference. I remember when I first came to Calvary's Way Ministry, y'all, I was a mess. As first lady said, one around the wilderness, honey. You, you in the wilderness. Come back to the fold. Right? I remember coming and I was like, you know, all out of whack. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking like I'm, I got something. But in the inside, in the inside, our internal spiritual being, which is the Holy Ghost, wasn't I can, you know, I wasn't surrendering to it. I ain't going to say it wasn't I can right. I wasn't surrendering to it. Because I'm looking at this fleshly man, and that's why First Lady said, your husband, your wife, your children cannot do this for you. It cannot, it can help buffer you. You know, it can help in areas like that because you're going to get tired after a while. And you're going to have to do something, right? So let's look at the word culture, cultured. A cultured person is also called refined. Do we need to be refined in some areas of our lives? I do. Gentleness is one of the areas. Because I've been, you know, when you first get saved, right? I've been saved like over 20 years now. No remember the second 2003 on a Thursday. Okay, the Lord saved me. I remember that because my life changed. My spirit changed. You know, when you first get saved, you running for the Lord, you happy. You are, I mean, you are on fire. You don't even want to kill a cockroach because you're so gentle in the spirit, like, oh my God, just pick them up and throw them out the window. Let them live. You know, but you be, you be like that. You are so gentle because your mind and heart is open. So you are able to receive what the, word, what the word is telling us, what the leader is telling us. So when you first get saved and you don't know nothing, that's a good thing. Because now the word can pour into you. But when you've been saved for a while and you're into these fables, these religions, and all these, what grandma said, and all this right here, you're traditional. So that stuff got to be stripped down, stripped off, and it's got to pour back the word in it. So it's got to be cultured. It has to be cultivated. And we come from different civilizations, even though we live in America. 
we come from different civilization. And what I mean by that, we come from different households, we come from different walks of life. We may have parents that was raised in the church, had, you know, they pastors and they deacons and all this. So you've been raised in it. You may have a parent on this side is uh, heathen. Street, yeah, street, you know, hood, all that. So you got to be cultivated. That means you have to script out these things that's not going to be feasible for your spirit man. Your spirit man. And it also says you have to have good manners when you're being cultivated. Some of us have good manners. Some of us don't. Some of us come from a place we don't know what manners are. Right? We are just, oh my God, help our hearts. You help our minds. Okay? But it's an eloquency. It's an eloquency of it. That means you have to be taught. Right? As women, we've been taught how to adorn ourselves, right? Been taught how to put on the lashes, do the eyebrows, put the eyebrows on fleek. You know what I'm saying? Get the hair right, get the nails. You know how you're watching the, you know, the stello nails, the coffin nails, the whatever nail, jail nails, whatever kind of nails, shoes, all that is good. But you're adorning yourself on the outward. What about the adorning yourself in the inward, man? Adorning yourself with the inward man. So you have to be cultivated, y'all. You have to let God unfilter some things out of you that is not feasible for our growth. Like having a bad attitude. Bad attitude. Stunt, stop your growth. Being stubborn. Strong-headed. Can stop your growth. Okay, do you agree? Okay, so God wants us to educate ourselves with his word, okay? That once we start educating ourselves, we can, we can learn how to be gentle now. But we have to still go through some things. So let's look at refine in character. Can anybody agree that our character need to be worked on? Or you feel like you got it all together? Oh Lord, if you feel like that, you might well walk back out the door. Cause you can't hear nothing what the word is saying to you. It's not penetrating your heart. So when the word start penetrating your heart, you are able to look at yourself differently, and you are able to receive what somebody is saying about you that can cultivate you. Amen? Amen. So let's be enlightened. Okay, that's part of culture, 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 cultivating. We have to be enlightened with some things. If a woman never has been taught how to walk in heels, and she come in there and fall down, what y'all gonna say? She may be drunk. She may be going through, but she hasn't been taught. And I say that because some women don't know how to walk in heels, right? And it's kind of funny because I don't wear a whole lot of heels, but, you know, I try my best. But we have to be cultivated. You understand? Cultivated. That means strip off, put on, strip off, put on. And we have to put on the garment of what God is telling us, and that's his righteousness. Amen? So... As we refine in character, what about our conduct? Amen, somebody. Our conduct. My conduct over these three, let me say these last four years, been like up and down. And y'all all know me since I've been in character ministry. Y'all can tell what something is going on with me. They can call it out, even the, our keyboard player, Lonnie. He's like, Minister Green, something ain't right with you. Something ain't right with you. What's wrong? Then you ain't praising like you was. Because you know what? You don't did something in your spirit. You don't did something in your flesh that your spirit don't agree with. Put it that way. You have did something out of the, you don't say something you had no business saying. You know, your mouth full of gall. Cursing. Let's use the word cursing because y'all like I don't know what gall is. Gall is cursing unpleasant things that's coming out of your lips. So when you're doing all that, you cannot be gentle. You can't be producing gentleness. Now, I can be transparent up here. I have not been gentle with my husband. We don't have several meetings with Bishop and First Lady. And I don't, get, I don't, I don't grow in that area. Thank you, Lord. But even my husband noticed some growth. Because you know what he tell me? You got a gold star this week. <laughs> yes. You got a gold star this week. I say, man, I haven't had a gold star since first grade. 
Come on, y'all. Y'all know about them gold stars. Right? He said, you doing something. That, you know, I like this. So when your husband start looking at you different and start making comments about your growth, don't take offense. You know, please don't take offense. Because I, I take offense sometimes. I have a problem. And the word tells us not to take offense at anything if you're in the Lord. That's what the book of Psalms tells us. Right? So we can't take offense. So let the process begin. Let the process begin. We have talked about cultivating our vineyard. Our vineyard is our soul, right? And we got to be concerned about our soul. So the first thing you have to be, you have to be gentle. You have to have some love first, some peace, some joy, and you got to go through that long suffering so you can produce some gentleness. Okay? Because that long suffering is going to make you produce something. It's going to either make you be bitter or it's going to give you a forgiving heart. And you cannot be gentle without a forgiving heart, right? It's okay. I just want, I just want y'all to see if y'all on the same page with me. Because it's all what the first lady says. We are allowing God to cultivate our spirit man so the world can see what God is doing in our lives. And we're living and we're lining up with the precepts of God. We can't be one way in this building and another way out the building. Now, if you got some issues, we got a bishop and we got a first lady that will help us, you know, get where we need to be. But you got to listen. You got to first listen, then you got to apply to your life. Then you can't get mad because they telling you the truth. Right? Right? Amen? Amen. Oh, let me go to this page right here. I know my husband don't like me flipping the pages, but y'all bear with me. I'm not with the aberrest, you know, all the iPads and stuff. I ain't got that down packed yet. Okay? But I'm, I'm going to come old school with y'all. Okay? Amen? So... Let's talk about that again, about the wise being, a conversation being chased, your conversation being chased. Even in your, on your job, is your conversation being chased? Are you being gentle with people? I remember being a CNA for 12 years, right? And I worked 11 to 7 shift. And that wasn't an easy shift, y'all. You got people sleeping at this time, right? But we, I had patients that was up at that time, cutting up. And the coworkers would come to me and say, Melissa, would you come in this room with us? Because this patient just not acting right. You have a touch with them. You have that touch. You could just say the right thing. But you have to have a gentle heart to do this type of work for one thing. You got to have compassion. You got to be honest. All right, you got to have some integrity. You got to have respect for these people. Right? Because you're going to be on the other side one day, whether y'all don't know that or not. Somebody going to have to help you maybe wipe your mouth. Y'all fill in the blank. Okay? But we have to have a gentle heart. That's the main thing about living this life. Because a gentle heart helps. It makes room. It makes room for forgiveness. It makes room for humility. And you can't do this without humility, y'all. We all know that we don't been through some things, right? I can attest to abuse, abusive relationship. Abusive relationship will make you hard. It will do something to your spirit, man. It will settle things in your spirit that you don't want. Anger, bitter, bitter malice. You trying to have a get back spirit. You know, it can develop other spirits. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Promiscuous spirit when you don't been handled so much. Right? You accept anything. Anything goes. Right? So when you're being handled in that area, that part of gentleness has diminished. Now, you got to look for your help now. Because you're broken now. Anybody can test being in a relationship and you've been broken. Be real with yourself. Because we have been broken through marriages, through fake relationships, fake friends. Fake loved ones, because loved ones will really get on your nerves. Be honest. Then the ones really get to you, because they talk, 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 and they know your life, and they're going to speak about your life, and when you mess up, they're going to point it out. We can't be like that as saints of God. We cannot be like that towards one another. Amen? Amen? Because the gentleness of your spirit will help you 
it will help you practice the things that we need to do to cultivate our hearts. Because it's all about our heart, y'all. Our heart has to be cultivated. Amen? To, um, it's a why is gentleness so powerful? Why is it so powerful? Because gentleness is a strong hand with a soft touch. A strong hand with a soft touch. I'm going to use this as an example. And it's not, this is, it's, it's not something that is in my heart right now, but it's just a natural thing. Everybody, does anybody have flown on a jet? 747-727-707. You know, they get big or small, you know how they go, right? But my first encounter on a plane was in 2020. First time flying a plane, right? And I went to Connecticut. My brother flew me up there, me and my daughter. And that was, I had to ride four planes. You know, I'm like, Lord, help me, four? This is my first time? And what I'm, going, I'm talking about, those first three landings was not gentle. The first one wasn't gentle. So I'm feeling some type of way getting on the second plane. Like, Lord, help me. Help me. Cover me. You know, you're praying, right? But that fourth plane, that one that brought me back to Jacksonville, it was a gentle landing, right? Gentle landing. I say that because some of us have turbulence in our life. We on a plane. We flying high, okay? We way up there. High-minded, stiff-necked, stubborn, don't want nobody telling you nothing. You get mad because they telling you. You know what I'm saying? Way up there. You know how, how far are we are on an airplane? That's way up there. Far as your eye can see. Right? You still can see it. If you look, you see the clouds. You see the smoke behind it, right? That's how our lives are. We got smoke behind us, y'all. So how can we clear up that smoke? How? How can? Okay, first of all, gentle in, involves being down to earth. Not saying somebody's going to walk over, but you got to have some humility. You got to have a quiet ego. Hello? Someone's got some egos in here. Super egos, quiet ego. Not the one puffed up, talking all the time, like going to hit that point. No, no, not that ego. The one that's really have an ear to hear. Okay? And that's the spirit of humility. We have to accept these, the humility in order to have gentleness. We have to accept the humility in order to have peace, love, joy. Love. We have to accept that humility. Okay? Having a soft and supportive demeanor. That's kindness. Okay? Supportive, soft and supportive demeanor. Some people be supportive and they just be talking. They turn you off. Like, wow, that being supportive? That sounds like you got some issues too. I don't need that demeanor around me. So, gentleness is a virtue. It's doing, it's doing your good when the least possible harm to others. As I was saying as a nurse, I used to go in the room and I used to be gentle with the patients. You know, even I, my first patient was 511 pounds, y'all, with my little self. How can I be gentle with her? First of all, I got to talk to her first. Be gentle with her first. You know, soft-spoken. Because some of us have some issues. Some of us have some, you know, uh, confidence, you know, we have some confidence issues. You know, some of us, as we get sick, we don't want nobody helping us. They get prideful. For every pride, we get prideful with somebody trying to script things off us that we want to keep holding on to. That's that flesh. Remember that, y'all. The flesh. We are killing it, right? And we're gonna kill it by the fruits of the spirit being manifested in our lives, right? Okay. Gentleness. It is the decision to approach others from a stance of love, rather than indifference or worse. Indifference or worse. Are you going to approach somebody that really hurt you with love? Don't knock you across the head with a shotgun. You're going to, and I'm, I ain't making that up, y'all. I promise you I'm not. But God allowed me to see that person again and show them gentleness. But 20 years ago, I wasn't feeling gentle. But now that the Lord has pruned me, cultivated me, now I can have a chase conversation. Okay? Amen. Gentleness helps us to build stronger relationships with others. Amen. It allows us to communicate and resolve issues, conflicts. 
what about the internal conflicts we have on our, in our own self? Can, gent can we be gentle with ourselves? Are we hard on ourselves? Are we beating ourselves down? Are we doubting what God is doing in our lives? Amen? Gentleness is an important quality to cultivate. I talked about that. One that can bring healing, reconciliation, and peace. A gentle person still speaks truth. Amen? Do y'all agree? Sometimes even painful truth. But doing so, guard your tone so that truth, truth can be received. Amen? Our tones means a lot. Our tone means a lot. Even when we're speaking to our husbands, they don't want to hear us because of our tone. Amen? No, my husband ain't going to say amen. He gonna, he don't even, he's got a couple of husbands in him, but um, they're not going to receive you when you're acting like a donkey. <laughs> amen? And I ain't talking about that donkey Jesus sent to go get, and they brought it back. No, I ain't talking about that donkey. I'm talking about your bad attitude, your, your, your walking away, your throwing up fits, all that. Ain't trying to hear nothing, arguing for a whole hour, and the man ain't saying nothing. Nothing that is not being chased in quiet spirit. We need a quiet and gentle spirit, ladies and men, so you can learn how to deal with your wife with intelligence. You have to learn of her, learn of her, want to be wives, make sure that man learn of you want to be husband, make sure that woman learn of you. Because it's a learning process when you're in a marriage, y'all. You be all gung-ho when you get married, be looking at that man, looking all like he's chocolate, all that. But still, that woman looking all luxurious, that's lust, y'all, when you first get married. Don't twist. Don't get it twisted. That's lust. And it's talking about the flesh, because the flesh is something that we have to, I say again, subdued. We have to keep it under subjection. We have to allow God to manifest the fruits of our spirit. First of all, have a heart willing. Some people can have a willing heart. I could say this. I use this as an example. I said this last night, the mic. I said, what about this child? You know, when I was growing up and, you know, we went to church and I seen a parent, the child would never be still in church, right? So first time, they're standing up, standing all in pew, second time, they're standing up. Third time, they get a spanking, right? So, that third time, the child sit down, but he looks up to the dad like, I'm sitting down right now, but my spirit ain't sitting down. <laughs> right? That's how some of us are. Our spirit not sitting down. Listen. It's just, <laughs> amen. <laughs> but the thing is, we, are become, we become so traditional and so, you know, like, we, nobody can tell us nothing as we get older. I tell you, you are... When you get older, you need to be trying to still learn some things. Learn all you can on this earth to help you get wisdom, right? Because that's what it's all come down to. It comes down to wisdom, right? And I'm going to turn over to the book of James. Okay, Deke, can you put the book of James up? And I'm going to close out with the book of James, right? Chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 17 and verse 18. Okay, but the wisdom that is from above is, is first pure. Pure means chaste, holy, and clean, right? Amen? Then peaceable, right? Then it says gentle, right? So we cannot have these fruits without wisdom. We cannot let these fruits, they, they won't grow without wisdom. That's in our lives, right? We need wisdom in my life. We need wisdom from people that have wisdom. And it's come from authority because we, we cannot sit in here unless we're under somebody's authority, right? And they have to be subject to authority too, right? So we can't, we can't teach this or live this if we don't have nobody to guide us. Amen? So when, when the word says in verse 17, easy to be entreated, that means you're not stubborn. You're not headstrong, but you're going to yield to your leaders. You're going to yield to teaching. You're going to yield to something that's going to be edifying for the body of Christ. Amen? And next it says, full of mercy. 
full of mercy, always for forgiving, and performing acts of kindness. Full, are we merciful to one another? I ain't going to ask y'all you merciful to somebody out there in the street. Are you merciful to the people in this house? Are you? Are you showing act of kindness? Or are you doing all this other stuff that is not acceptable and pleasing in God's sight? Right? Are you doing it without partiality? A respected per partiality. Thank you. Partiality. Having no respected a person. Without hypocrisy. Are you open? Honest? Genuine and true? Ask yourself. Because James is trying to tell us how to not use this tongue ungodly. If you read the book of James, right? It tells us how not to use this tongue ungodly because it's like this pink tornado, man. It'll get out of control. It'll be all over the place, tearing up stuff. This tongue can tear up some stuff. It can tear down some houses. It can tear up the universe. It can. So in my closing, amen, it said, why is gentleness so important to God? The Bible speaks of God as our tender father in mercy. The loving shepherd caring for his flock. He cares for us. And since gentleness comes from God, it is carried with it. It's with us, right? It's divine power. All these fruits that we are practicing and trying to be cultivated and pruned and, and so we can walk it out are divine power in our life. Amen? And because gentleness has its source in God, we should feel more gentle when we are closer to God. Do y'all agree? So it can increase it can increase and express our loving power. In a whole nutshell, the good news of our Lord and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because that's what it's about, y'all. It's patterning our lives after our Lord and Jesus Christ. And he was the perfect upright man, right? He didn't sin because he had these fruits of the spirit, right? Amen? He had them resting on him and more. But for the fruits of righteousness, and I'm going to leave y'all with this, for the, fruits, for the fruits of righteousness has to be sown, which are the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, kindness, faith, self-control, and they have to be sown in our lives. It has to be fertilized, cultivated, and pruned. Amen? So when, as David said, I'm going to leave you with Psalms 18 and 35. Amen? It says, Thou hast also given me the shield of our salvation, thy salvation. And thy right hand has, hold, has held me up, and thy gentleness has made me great. That's what David is saying. David went through some challenges. Amen? Read your Bible. All the men and women of God went through some challenges to get where they needed to be, right? So we are not that yet, there yet, y'all. We have not arrived. We're still a work in progress, but we want to be a good work in progress, right? We want to perform a good works for God. So we have to allow God to develop these fruits, which are the fruits of the Spirit from Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. Okay? Amen? And let God perfect you. Let him perfect you through his word. And he perfects us through these fruits, through these fruit of the spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on and give her a hand of praise. Awesome, awesome, awesome teaching. Good job. She is truly a teacher. Amen. She gave you definitions. She gave you uh, practicality. She broke it down. She is a teacher. So very, very good job, honey. Good job. Amen. Now, when we leave here tonight, we got to practice what she taught. Right? When you go to school, the teacher teach, and we go out of the class, and we do what? We practice. Amen. So don't be caught off guard if your gentleness be tried. After you leave here tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So our next um, speaker tonight is going to be one of our ministers in training, Minister Asia Howard. And Asia is going to talk about goodness. 
Amen. Good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to give honor to Bishop and Pastor. Thank you for a chance again to speak. Um, um, God, I just pray that you allow me to decrease and you increase so that I can speak only the things that we have talked about um, as I prepared. So, with goodness, um, I don't really have a title per se. Oh, wait, let me back up because I just thought about it. I also want to shout out my husband. Um, give him a little, you know, honor and praise because he be putting up with all of this. And I know I help him practice all the fruits of the spirit. So <laughs> thank you, man of God, for putting up with me. <laughs> But um, to get into my topic of goodness, I feel like I have two titles, but I'm going to just, you know, throw them both out there, and I know that God is going to bring it all together full circle. Um, one of my topics is goodness equals gratitude, and um, the verse that I have that connects with that is Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, where it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And, you know, when I was talking to God about this, that's the first title he gave me about goodness is gratitude and that verse. And it's like, if you take the time to just think on all of those types of things, that's you showing goodness. That you, you know, valuing and appreciating the goodness that he has placed in your life. And the goodness that you can reflect on in those times where, you know, you may be going through one of those valleys and you feel like all the walls are closing in around you. Um, and then, you know, like my other title came in as, you know, God is good all the time. And what do they say in response? All the time, God is good. And that, you know, still kind of ties into the Philippians 4 verse. Every time I sit and I think about, you know, the goodness of God and how he, you know, how he has done things in my life and just watching his hand as I look back, you know, from a child into now and all the seeds that, you know, my grandma planted on, you know, loving him and honoring him and, you know, wanting to be like him instead of being, the rebellious teenager that I was, now I can sit and I can reflect on those good times of, you know, her telling me, hey, God is going to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I didn't understand that as a kid, but as an adult going through hard times, I'm like, okay, you know, that's the, that's the verse that I pull out when I feel like I'm starting to struggle and reflecting on God's goodness, you know, in a time where, um, when me and my husband, were, well, when I got pregnant with our second kid, I really wasn't happy in the beginning because I'm like, you know, we're in the process of trying to buy a house and we just got a car and, you know, we're trying to do all of the good things that we are supposed to do as current parents now, but all the ends aren't meeting. But that's when I'm able to, you know, reflect on his goodness. And that's when, you know, my husband comes into play and he's that level-headed guy where he'll, you know, when I'm starting to freak out or I'm starting to panic, he'll come in and be like, babe, that's all right. Just give it to God. Don't worry about it. And I just be like, what? I don't know how to do that, but keep praying. Keep believing for me because I'm weak right now, baby. But, you know, like his goodness for God is rubbing off on me. And that kind of goes into what Melissa was saying, which brings me into what I, you know, the, the what I prepare. And it's, you know, it talks about the fruit of the spirit builds on each other. Oh, and also segue throw in. Bishop, you was all in my message last week when you got up here and you did your closing out. I'm sitting back there. I'm like, dang, he making the points I'm trying to make. And can I get to him next week, please? Just, just a little bit. But anyway, you know, the fruits of the spirit, they build on each other. 
they are listed in a certain order for a reason. And at the beginning of the year, I started a Bible plan and, you know, God forgive me, I haven't finished it. But it's going through the Bible in a year. And in that, you know, when you get to the first five chapters, God lists everything in a certain order. And as I was reading through it, I'm like, oh, God, this is boring. But in the process, it made me realize, like, God is a God of order. And you don't want to go out of whatever order he is setting things up in. So if he whispered in your ear, these are the things and this is how you're supposed to do it, please execute it in the way that he asked you to do it. Because when you start to deviate from that order and you go your own way, it, it's going to throw everything off course. Ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> but then it also goes into, like, I'm a baker. And, you know, with baking, like, there are certain things, baking is a science, but sometimes you're in a bind and you may have to make substitution for things. Or you can follow everything right, but something still goes wrong, which could be ingredients, temperature, too much or too little time. But with God, you can follow his recipe to a T with no substitutions needed. And when we think of, we, we think if we show goodness, to the unhoused people at the stoplight, then we don't have to show it to the neighbors we see every day or on Sunday, which is you masking your goodness or vice versa. Um, so back to the fruits of the spirit and then building on each other. They're there for a reason. And this is part of a commentary he, I read, but then the revelation he gave me kind of goes into like biblical numerology. But anyway, there are three groups within the list of the fruits of the spirit. The first group is love, joy, and peace, and those are all connected to your relationship with God. The second group is patience, kindness, or gentleness, goodness, and those refer to the spiritual life and its manifestations to men. So it's just how you treat other people. And then the third group is faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which seems to point to the world in which the Christian life is to be lived as a sense of a scene of difficulties and oppositions. Now, those indiv individual members are not isolated graces, but are all connected, springing from one root and consulting and con constituting an organic whole. So in essence, you can't have one without the other. So you can't have love and not have joy. You can't have peace and not have kindness. You can't have goodness and not have gentleness. They all have to, you know, come together. They all have to go together. So um, don't try to practice one without the other. Make sure you have all of them. Now, with that being said, goodness is the foundation for kindness. And the Bible describes goodness as a state of being. It says that, good, that God is good, and goodness isn't just something he has. It is who he is. Since we're recreated in his image, goodness is who we are too. We just have to to develop the fruit and to act on it. Now ask me, how do you develop goodness? You develop goodness by spending time with God himself. Which will take me to ver um, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So the more you understand how good God is, the more your life will be rooted in that goodness. Fruit isn't achieved by working, but it is birthed by abiding. And goodness is summed up, again, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which is, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So studying his goodness in the word for yourself and ask him to give you fresh illumination. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, we grow into the characteristics of goodness. Now, kindness and goodness slide very naturally into one another. They do not, they do not only require the negative virtue of retaliating, but both express the Christian attitude towards all of meeting them, whatever attitude, with good. So really, you know, anytime you encounter a problem, anytime people want to talk about you, any type of foolishness, you have to do combat evil with good. And kindness is kindness expresses what's in your heart, 
and goodness is the habitual actions that show itself, such as in um, Psalms chapter 116, verse 12, as well as Romans 15, verse um, 14. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, so God's goodness is defined as a perfection of his character, which he exercised towards his creation according to their various circumstances. Goodness and justice are just are a few of several aspects of one unchangeable, infinitely wise, and sovereign moral perfection. God is not sometimes merciful or sometimes just, but he is internally, infinitely just and merciful. God is infinitely and unchangeably good. And his goodness is incomprehensible by the finite mind. God's goodness appears in two things, giving and forgiving. Um, so in my study, you know, God kind of made me realize, which I meant to say this before, but there's two types of goodness. There, his, there is his godly goodness where, um, you know, kind of like how I just read that, you know, his goodness is incomprehensible incom by our finite mind. And, you know, God's goodness, oh, that's what I read. God's goodness is defined by a perfection of his character, which he exercises towards his creatures according to their very circumstances. But then there's humanly goodness in which man is not, a mere passive quality, but the deliverance, deliberate preference of right to wrong, the firm and persistent resistance of all moral evil, and the choosing of following of all moral good. So as a human, where free will comes in, we have the choice of whether we want to do good or whether we want to do evil. And, you know, as a Christian, we should always hope to do good and not evil. And that's what God wants us to do. If we're recreated in his image and his image is made out of goodness, then we should also want to practice goodness and, you know, just not, not you know, worry about what other people are saying about us or what they're thinking about us um, and just trust in God and believe in God that, um, just believe in God that, you know, his goodness is going to, overreach the things that we're going through and measure beyond what we could think or imagine because at the end of the day like his goodness is all that we can you know hope for and depend on to not allow us to succumb to our negative thoughts or the thoughts of other people and you know things like that and then hold on oh so I got more notes. <laughs> oh, so I like to watch cooking shows, and God likes to talk to me while I watch certain things. And one of the things that he expressed to me while I was watching this show called Barbecue Showdown, and it was roasting a whole pig. And I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Like, one day I may do that. Or invite me over if you decide you want to roast a whole pig, because <laughs> then I can learn from you. <laughs> but <laughs> one of the things that he, you know, spoke to me was the lady was describing, like, um, in the different five, well, okay, so in the show, they had to roast the pig, but they couldn't put it underground. They had different contraptions that they could use, and there was fire, you know, on it. And um, depending on how... Um, depending on what method they use, it would dictate how the pig is cooking. So, you know, they had to watch it closely and spend time roasting it to make sure that, you know, it's being cooked properly. But then the thing about cooking pork is the shoulder is going to cook differently and at a different temperature than the loin, and the loin is going to cook differently at a temperature than the shank. So, you know, within cooking this pig, you got three different areas that you're trying to get together and make sure they all pullable and all tender. And it's like, okay, and like both of the guys that were there, like they were both nervous about it. One's got a whole contraption just broke down and I felt for them because it's been times where I've been in the kitchen 
and I'm like, oh my God, like I got to do this, this, and this, and everything, I'm running out of stuff, and everything seems to be falling apart. But in actuality, it's all coming together. But the what I got really out of it was the lady, she was explaining, you know, in the process of the cooking, like the way they roast it, the fat is supposed to break down, and that's what helps to um, provide moisture to the meat and to help the muscles and stuff break down so that the ham is, you, the shoulder part is still pullable and juicy the same way the loin is gonna be pullable and juicy. And so she, they described it, well the temperature situation, it hit, a, it hit what is called a stall. So it was like, you know, pork is supposed to cook to I think 145 and it was maybe at like 120 but it wasn't going above it and it wouldn't drop below it. And so, like, both guys are nervous because both of their pigs, like, hit a stall. And, you know, the way it came to me was, like, sometimes you will hit a stall and stuff is breaking down all around you. Life is cranking up the heat and being rearranged. And that's the time when you need to trust God and his ability to see you through. The stall will end. And that's what she said at the end. Like, the stall is going to end. They just have to trust in their what they're cooking and they have to be patient and that spoke volumes to me because I know like all the time I'm like I'm usually rushing and that like transparency moment that's just poor time management on my part sometimes because in my head I'm like I live on the south side and I got to be on the west side and I know it takes me 20 minutes but I'm still going to leave the house 10 to 15 minutes because I think I'm speed racer once I hit 95 and then that's when traffic is like, nah, play, you can go ahead, slow down. <laughs> you not, you not do it. This ain't what you want. Like, just go ahead and slow down. Call whoever you need to call and tell them you about to be late. <laughs> so I just am like, all right. So, you know, God is always talking to me about, sis, be patient. Like, it's going to come. You know, your time is going to come. You know, cheer everybody on that's being blessed because your time is going to come. And I'm like, okay, God, like, so when people tell me, hey, I did this, I did that, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm your biggest cheerleader. We don't talk every day, but no, I'm rooting for you. Like, I see good things out of you. And, you know, I'm, I'm just always excited for other people. And sometimes, you know, like, it makes me realize I don't always get excited for myself the way I should, but I'm just always so happy for other people and what's going on with them that sometimes it takes somebody else to tell me, well, hey, you did this, you did that, you know, this is going good for you, that's going good for you. And I'm like, really? You see that? Because I don't see that. For real? So, you know, like, it just still goes back to, you know, the goodness of God for me. Um, just seeing his hand in my life and um, seeing his hand in my life and realizing, like, how good he's been to me over even just the last 10 years of me being here in Jacksonville. I would have never, you know, got to where I am if it wasn't for him. And anytime I come across people, especially like friends back home, they're always like, oh, you know, I want to move out of state. I want to do this. I'm always like, girl, if you don't move out of state, like, you never know. That's the best thing that can ever happen to you. You know why? Because from experience, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I was so stubborn about not wanting to leave New Jersey because I'm like, oh, all my friends are here, all my family is here. But it took an abusive relationship for me to be like, oh, okay, no, this ain't it. I gotta pack my bags and go. Not really any bags because I didn't have a bag, but I left and I'm so glad I did. But even looking back, you know, even in that relationship, just seeing the goodness out of that, like. You know, like Melissa mentioned earlier, sometimes, you know, being in an abusive relationship can cause you to be bitter and stuff like that. But I tell people a lot of times, like, I'm thankful for, you know, my abusive experience. Because one, it taught me different things, you know, within it that I may not have ever known or learned at that point. Because the guy I was with was older than me. So, you know, you think as a young woman, oh, I'm going to get with a guy that's older than me. He's going to teach me stuff. That's not always the case. He gonna lead you down a dark path that you don't want to be in. And that's what happened to me. And I, you know, I remember watching my mom go through stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, that's never gonna be me, blah, blah, blah. And you know, it turned around, it was me. And I'm like, how did I get here? 
why am I here? I don't have to be here. Um, but it like, you know, just in our relationship, I remember he wasn't the person that pushed me towards God because that was my grandma. That's always been her prayer that I have a relationship with him. But I know God was in the situation because he was one of those people that would like encourage me, read your Bible, you know, pray, let's go to church. It was hit or miss, but, you know, like, let's go to church and stuff like that. So that's when I experienced God's goodness, even in the midst of a very crazy, you know, j- terminalist situation where I really could have lost my life. But, or, I mean, transparency moment, I tried to take my life at one point. But then, like, I remember crying out to God, telling him, like, look, I really don't want to do this. I really don't want to die. I just don't want to be in this situation. But there's also many other people that's dependent on me to not be in the situation. Like, you know, who's going to take care of this person? Or who's going to take care of that person? Or what is my future going to be like? And stuff like that. And that's just seeing God's goodness throughout my life where I'm just like, all right, well, you know, I didn't expect it to be like this, but here we are. And here I am. And, you know, next thing I know, I'm on a Greyhound bus to Jacksonville, Florida. Somewhere I've never been, didn't have, you know, any friends. I had family, but who wants to really depend on other people? But it was a moment of vulnerability that I had to depend on somebody. And I'm glad my sister is the person that she is, because I know she prayed me through it and prayed me out of it. And she's still praying for me, making sure, you know, like, my life is going the way it's supposed to go. So I'm very thankful, you know, that, His goodness was expressed through her and her family because her husband didn't have to, you know, give her the okay to let me move down here with her. He could have been like, nah, y'all on your own with that one. And I would have been like, okay, I'll figure it out because that's my model. I'll figure it out. But, you know, resting in God's goodness teaches me I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to figure it out by myself. You know, I have him. He'll help me figure it out. He's placed people in my life that will help me figure it out. So, you know, like, his goodness really is finite to my mind because I may not want to question certain things. I may not want to do certain things. But, you know, I have to remember, like, God doesn't think the way I think. He doesn't do the things that I do. He's thinking way ten steps ahead of me, and I'm still worried about this little small piece of the puzzle that has no significance in whatever his plan is. Or it does have significance. But it's not as significant as I'm blowing it up to be. Um, so I know I got. Um, no, no, no. Oh, God. No, I caught myself setting the timer so I know. And I hit pause and didn't hit start again. <laughs> I'm stalling out. <laughs> um, well, I kind of brought my bring it home verse <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I can go on and on about God's goodness. Maybe that's why Bishop gave me this topic, like, just thinking. And I know everybody has that moment where they can think about the goodness of God in their life. But that's why goodness equals gratitude. You know, when you think about those things, it makes you grateful and you have gratitude. And having gratitude has actually been proven to make you healthier and happier in life. And when you can think on those things, that brings you the joy that you need, that brings you that peace that you need, that brings love into your heart to be able to care for, you know, other people around you so that way you're not, you know, wilding out on them or saying things that you're not supposed to say to them, or just random people in general. Because you know how when you be hangry in the Wendy's line, and they like, oh, the machine down. Then you like, what you mean the machine down? Y'all just took somebody's order before me. How is the machine down? But you hangry, so you can't, you know, you're trying to control it. But then, you know, you think about, all right, well, I got other options that may just be good. Right, like you you think about, I got other options, and I know I had my heart set on this, but I get repositioned in this, and it may have been fresher, it'll come out better. They have hot fries wherever you're going, 
Wendy's might have, they might have just dipped them real quick in the grease to make them hot again, and they've really been sitting there for two hours. Mm-mm, we don't, we don't like them. But I used to work at McDonald's, so I would have people all the time like, can you make my fries fresh? And I'd be like, not really, because it's a lunch rush, but I like you, so I may. But then, you know, you got managers like, oh, just dip them back in the grease. It's like, ooh, that's nasty, but all right, hey, whatever. But then, like, the trick was you ask for no salt, and then it'll make it fresh for you. <laughs> and then you'd be like, can I get a couple salt packets? <laughs> and then they give it to you. But that would annoy me, too, because I'm like, I'm slaving over this hot fryer, and you really doing this in the middle of a lunch rush. But, you know, that's what patience also came in. Working in fast food and retail teaches you a lot of patience. And it teaches you a little bit of gratitude because sometimes, you know, well, not a little bit, a lot of it, you'll see those people come in and they're struggling and they're visibly struggling. And it's like your heart hurts for them because it's like, well, you know, she might be on her last and her car declines. Like, what can you do besides say a prayer for her? Maybe if you had the money, chip in for her. But, you know, you just want to have that goodness in your heart and have gratitude um, because it will help you cultivate those other fruits of the spirit. Okay, that's it. That's all I got for y'all tonight. I'm sorry. Stay right there. Stay right there. You did not try. You excelled. You did amazing. And the more opportunity you get, the better you're going to become. Great job, baby. Keep watching them cooking shows, because, baby, that was a revelation. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, can we give it up again for Minister Green and Minister Howard. Both of you did an amazing job. Amazing job. God is definitely doing a great work. Amen. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has not given us the spirit of fear but a power and of love and a sound mind. A lot of times we have butterflies, not because, not, not necessarily because we hadn't did it before, just a uh, spirit of apprehension. <laughs> and fear try to grip you. But this teaches you, um, as you know, I'm not one that's going to let you quit. <laughs> <laughs> or back out. Right. You know, uh, you should have yelled from the back. <laughs> <laughs> ain't gonna let you quit. Ain't gonna let you back Amen. out. Because I'm an encourager, but more than an encourager, I'm one who would challenge you to be better than who you are. Amen. Amen. And if you get not there, I'm one gonna pull you back. You're right. Yeah. Gonna help you. Get an under uh, get an understanding that uh, you know you can't be heady and high minded. You know I always say this. You know when people think that they are, this is why we have to develop the fruit of the spirit. Because if you don't develop the fruit of the spirit, you can get heady. You can get high minded. You can get conceited. You can get to the place where um, can't nobody tell you nothing. And there was always warning before destruction. Always. Especially, especially I don't know about in the world, <laughs> but certainly in, in the Father. There's going to be, he's going to warn you before he uh, allows, not that he's going to allow you to get hurt or anything like that, but before he uh, uh, allow some stuff to be exposed. Oh, amen. 
he going to tap you on your shoulder a few times. Hey, 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 hey. But we still, even in correction, we still have to have a practice, the fruit of the spirit. Absolutely. Amen. And tonight they talked about kindness and gentleness, or kindness, gentleness, and goodness. Amen. And they both of them did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job on both of those subjects. The Bible says over in, and she actually, she's talking about me in her notes <laughs> last week. Uh, she went exactly to the scripture. Let's read Revelation uh, chapter 5. And you say, well, Pastor, they, they keep reading it every week. They're supposed to. They're supposed to. Why? So you can get it in your spirit. So you can get it in your spirit. See, this is one of the things you need. You have to have to, have to understand. Not only when you get a word or the word of God in your spirit, what happens is uh, you're practicing it. You practice, you practice, you practice. After a while, it becomes automatic. I can't get nobody to say nothing. That means that must mean half of y'all hadn't experienced that. That see, that's what see. I'm, I'm I'm reading the room. That's that's helping me to understand what where where you are because you if you can't say amen, that means you don't you haven't experienced that of practicing what you have. You probably don't want to tell us what you've been practicing. <laughs> 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 I, I'll just say what I just say this. It wasn't the word. It wasn't the fruit. <laughs> it wasn't the fruit of the spirit. But we've been them other seventeen. Yeah, we've been practicing some stuff, <laughs> but it was not what you needed to practice. Amen. Now we're getting to a place where we're discovering what we need to practice, Amen. huh? So that the word of God can get in us. And so now we, when we have an opportunity to act unseemly or to be conceited or to have anger and malice and some of those other 17 works of the flesh, they don't come up first no more. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Because they are, can I tell you something? They are all in there. It's just, check this out. It's, it's just one set is greater then the other set, okay, let me put it in there. One set is stronger than the other. Okay, okay, let me do it like this. One set, you've been practicing more than the other set. See, I, I thought I'd find y'all somewhere. Uh, are, are you with me? And whichever set, that's just like the flesh and the spirit. Whatever you've been practicing the most. It's the dominant one. That's the dominant one. That's the one that's going to show up the most. Yeah, See, oh God, you can fool some of the people. Some of the time. Because you can't, but you can't fool everybody all the time. I don't care how sweet. I don't care how sweet and kind and gentle and good. You show everybody in here. You might, you might even show them that on the job. But somewhere along the way, you may not even get slapped, just poked. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just poked. And check this out. All 17 works of the flesh going to show up and show out and embarrass you. And I hope you have a job when you get to I hope you have a job. Are, are, you, are you with me? That's why we have to put our flesh under subjection. You have to subdue this flesh and allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to work his way out of you. Huh? That means that your mind has to be renewed on a daily basis that means that you have to pull down come on somebody 
every stronghold or high thought that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Are you following what I'm saying? So the bottom line is, if you have a thought of anger or malice, you got to reach up there and pull it down. The devil is a lie. I'm not going to allow anger or malice to take a hold of me. I'm going to walk in goodness. I'm going to walk in kindness. I'm going to work on in gentleness. I'm going to walk in the uh, uh, fruit of the spirit. No, devil, I caught you stealing. Because uh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. When the enemy tries to come in and, and cause you to behave in a way that you know you shouldn't behave, he's trying to steal your joy. He's trying to steal your goodness. He's trying to steal your love. Come on, somebody. He's trying to steal all the rocks of the spirit. So now you go to work to, to, after you done showed out yesterday, you don't want to come to work tomorrow. But you got to pay them bills. I need these hours. I need this, 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 this money. <laughs> Amen. But you didn't show it out yesterday. Don't even know if you, it was at the end of the day yesterday. Don't even know if it got back to the supervisor. So you ain't slept all night. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm on. But are you, are you seeing the opportunity for you to uh, allow the fruit of the spirit to have its work in you? Huh? Or the spirit, the spirit of God to have its work on you. If you have the spirit of God, if you are uh, 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 been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm not talking about shouting. I'm not talking about dancing around because those are just evidences, not the evidence. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Are y'all with me? So a lot of times when we were coming up, everybody, when they had to go and tarry, the word tarry means to wait, not call on Jesus. Go look at the word. The word tarry in the Bible means to wait. W-A-I-T. It does not mean Come to the altar and call on Jesus. While somebody's spitting in this ear, let go. And then somebody hollering in this ear, don't let go. I'm confused. What you want me to do? Let go or don't let go? Which one? So maybe they start saying, I'm just calling Jesus, 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 Jesus. I let, hey, my uncle said he didn't been to the Tarian service a thousand times. And they, mm. He said he'd never get nothing. He's gonna open it. Oh, open your mouth. He's just gonna he's just gonna give it to him. I did but that myself too. I went to every service I know how to go to when I was first got saved. Just open your mouth. This is gonna happen. Uh -huh. I stood there just like that in the middle of Weaves in Savannah. Why well, need a mind on concert? Amen. I mean, not concert, but uh, conference. Amen. And so then that's why we have to study, study for ourselves. That's why when we teach, that's why I required, it, I required everyone. This is not a preaching session. This is a teaching session. So you can be equipped to teach and also to preach. When you can preach, I'm going to let you know. Amen. But <laughs> we got to have some... Some under uh, some understand. So, but you have an opportunity every single day, all day, every day, from the time you wake up. I don't like to be bothered with in the morning. I'm still working on my goodness and my kindness and my generous. <laughs> hey, can I be honest? Can I just be honest with you? I am just not a early morning person. Cause I'm already I'm up all night. I, when y'all waking up, I'm just going to bed. Yeah, every day. Yeah, I'm gonna go home. I look like I look like I'm tired. And which by the time I get to the house, I'm gonna be wide awake. <laughs> I'm gonna watch TV or I'm gonna study or I'm gonna pray at about four o'clock in the morning. And for you know, when I, I fall off to sleep, she's gonna be waking you know waking up, cutting on the light. Turn off the light, child. <laughs> 
<laughs> Amen. And so I've been working on that a while. I think it got better because I just turned over and put my head in the pillow. But, but we all have an opportunity every single day to allow the works of the fresh flesh to dominate your life or the fruit of the spirit to dominate your life. Amen. We've been talking about the fruit of the spirit for the last couple of weeks. How many of you have been working on your love? <laughs> we ain't seen no hands go up. <laughs> I saw one or two over here. How many of y'all been working on your love? How many of you ha have had the opportunity to really go off on somebody? On somebody the last couple of weeks? But you show love instead of malice or anger. Come on. Did you do it? Was you victorious? Don't count on just that one time. You got to be victorious a lot of times. Are you fine? Are you with me? Okay, we talked about love. Love, there's three different types of love. Three different types of love. Three different types of love. And we're going to go back over it. One is, any, anybody know? Agape. That is the God kind of love. The God kind of love. I believe I have a God kind of love. Because it's so many times I could could have did something to somebody. Amen. 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 It didn't take it, 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 it didn't it listen, this it wasn't no oversight overnight process. Because I had to get I had a get back spirit. If you did something to me, you can bash your bottom, your last penny. You can bet your last penny. You can bet everything you got that I'm coming. I may not be tomorrow. <laughs> may not be next week. <laughs> but I'm coming through. And that's how I, that's how I was. That's how I grew up. But when 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 when. You were the kind of person I was, and now I'm saved, and you know, and everybody know you were like that. It doesn't make for being a preacher or a child of God easy, because nobody wants to, you know, be around you. So you have to change some things about yourself, and and changing some things about yourself. I wanted to be different. I wanted, I, I wanted to be different. So I had to, I, this is something I had to practice daily, even over into my saved life. I want to be different, God. I want to be approachable. I want to be the kind of person. I want to have to, I used to walk around with mean mugging because I didn't know nothing else but the mean mug. Lady told me, she said, man, you need to ask God something for a different countenance. <laughs> really, she did. I came, she came right up to the pulpit. I was sitting up there. I guess I thought I was looking deep. <laughs> but she came right up to the pulpit after service was over. She said, baby, you need to ask God for a different continent. Ain't nobody going to come to you with your face looking like that. Yeah, I was a young, young preacher. But I had, to, I had to check this out. And this is one of the things that we have got to understand. That even when you hear correction, correction or constructive criticism or even rebuke check this out one of the things you got to do is keep your spirit right check this out if you don't keep your spirit right then you lose all the ground in god you just gained in other words you back up like miriam and aaron you you back up you murmur and you can complain and so you you back up from what god tell you so he's only trying to give you a lesson here to take you further, not to back you up. And check this out. It's tough to get your, keep your spirit right. Can I just go and be honest with you? Will y'all be honest? Some young time here, even in church, even in church, when something is said, you want to cuss them out. Anybody ever want to cuss their preacher out in church? See y'all see y'all all see y'all ain't gonna see you can't you can't you can't get delivered you can't get delivered if you won't be honest. Anybody will ever want to tell the preacher off? Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. 
If the preacher can't make you, check this out. If the preacher can't make you mad sometimes with what he preaching, he might not be your pastor. Oh, y'all, 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 huh? See, you will know he your pastor because when you say you ain't coming back, you ready to be back by Wednesday. <laughs> by, when, by Wednesday, you get some fire. I can't wait to get the Bible study. <laughs> huh? And, and I, knew, yeah, I, knew my, I knew my uncle was my pastor because he had me ticked off every week. The, the yellow, the, uh, the white head one was... I ain't going back. Y'all come on with me. Let's go. But by Wednesday, I was full of gas. And I left my head again. <laughs> Amen. But I knew that was my pastor because I, no matter how mad I got, I could never let him go. I could never let God go. I could never let, it, are, are you with me? And I think that's the thing that helped me stay because I had myself pulling on me, but God had a greater hold. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Huh? God had, God had a greater hold. Check this out. The scripture she went over was Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. I'm going to give you this and we're going to go. Okay? And I'm, I'm reading from the HCSB. Anytime I come up, uh, that's what I'm going to be using. I like the HCSB. Uh, but it says, uh, finally, brothers, and that one they'll say sisters, don't want to leave y'all out. <laughs> whatever is true, mm -hmm, whatever is honorable, whatever is just. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence in whatever it is, and if there be uh, any cause to give God praise, are you with me? Uh, dwell on those things. Love, joy, goodness, kindness, all of these things are in long suffering. Come on, we did long suffering. Peace, long suffering, kindness, and goodness. All of these things are calls to give God praise. Amen. All of these things are things of fruit that should be not only thought on, but practiced. Check this out. Oh, I heard the Holy Ghost. Thought on, practice, lived. Oh, I, heard you, I heard your Holy Ghost. Thought on, because if you're not thinking about them, you're not going to practice them. And if you never practice them, you will never live them. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? So we're trying to bring that to your forefront. And check this out. When you think on the goodness of God, you don't think about sin. I can't, well, y'all can't say amen because amen, y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all still practicing. Okay. But here, be me, believe when I say this. Whenever you think on the goodness of God and the things of God, sin has no power. He said, set your affections on things where? Above. Meaning the things that are above me, which are the things of God. Huh? When you have sexual affections on things above and not beneath, what's beneath you? 17 works of the flesh. Is it the enemy and all he's trying to do? There's things that he wants to pull you back into. In fact, you may be looking like this the most. Got one hand, one hand in the devil hand, and another hand in God's hand. Who are you going to yield to? Who are you going to yield to? Check this out. 
It is not, it's, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not easy. Can I be honest with you? Sometimes living for, living for God is not easy. But check this out. It ain't no harder than living in the life you was living before you got saved. You say that. Lord, have mercy. It's no harder. How many of y'all want to wanted to quit on God at one time? Come on, come on, be quiet. Y'all participate. Let me see y'all hands. Check this out. Even Jesus wanted to kid on God at one in, at one point in time. Y'all remember when? And the God never said, "Man, look at him. Can you, can you do something with this? Can you do something with with, with, with this cup? Huh? So we are in good. So we are in good company, right? If Jesus was there. And he overcame. Check this out. I'm not talking about, oh, oh, God, I heard your Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about Jesus, the God. I'm talking about Jesus, the man. I'm not talking about Jesus, the God. I'm talking about Jesus, the man. Do y'all understand that when I say? All oh, y'all know that Jesus was a man? Huh? He was all man and he was all God. If he was all God, he wouldn't have felt now one of them stripes. He wouldn't have cried when and when Lazarus died. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? He wouldn't have cried. He wouldn't have yelled out, uh, La, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabah. Yeah, he wouldn't have turned. Yeah, are you are you with me? Huh? But he we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. What, are that, what does that mean? Our high priest, which is Jesus Christ, has felt and went through and faced everything you are facing and going through right now. You are not walking this thing alone. But most of us are thinking on what we are going through. Did y'all hear me? How many of y'all going going through something? Just be honest. With you. Just raise your hand. You're going through something, and you think about going. You think about whatever you're going through all day long, even in your sleep. You thinking about it. Listen, can't sleep. Can't sleep because you thinking about it. But the Bible says, "Whatever things." Come on, I'm I'm preaching to I'm preaching to y'all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible said, whatever things, whatever things are true. Huh? Not the lie. Who, right, not the lie. That who's the enemy telling you. Whose report are you going to believe? You believe, you, you should believe what God said. And even, oh, God, I heard you, God. He said, some of y'all, he said, some of, some, some of y'all in a situation where they got the goods on you. They got the goods on you. But get to it. God will vindicate. I, I just came to y'all. I just gave y'all a word. Yeah, you suppose oh God. Okay, let me show you this right here. You were supposed to be convicted. But just in the nick of, nick of time, Jesus climbed up on the cross and wiped your sake clean. That's all I just said. That's all I just said. I'm pretty I don't got it. I haven't got too far now. Uh, I got too far in the bed. You ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> yeah, it <you> don't. <laughs> Amen. Are you with me? Are you with me? So think on this. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, wherever things are true, think on the true things of God. Check this out. You ain't got no business dwelling on a lie about you about anything don't even check yeah you got to learn how to not out of bit identify the lie and cast it down uh, when you recognize there's a lie cast it down i tell my i tell people all the time i don't hear that i don't hear that yeah you take that take that over there somewhere because that that ain't for my spirit huh whatever things are honorable huh if folk want to talk about somebody, put somebody down, I don't, I don't want to hear that. I don't, I, I don't want to hear that. Huh? 
You can't win unless you practice. Huh? You can't win if you don't let you practice. Check this out. Don't have itchy ears. Don't be one that runs to gospel, gossip and runs to stuff that, you know, huh? The Bible says for, for, for us to prove it. Prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it. Make sure it's real. I mean, it's 100% facts before you repeat it again. And I do that all the time. Some folk don't like that about me. But I ain't going to say a word till I got facts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I ain't going to say a word till I got facts. Amen. And if you lie to me, I'm going to call you a liar. You lied to me. I'm going to tell you, look right in your face, in your two eyes, and tell you, don't lie to me. You think, I'm like, I learned a lot from my uh, first 48. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I do. I learned a lot from first 48. They sit down on that table, and they have him over there, give him some chips and some juice, soften him up a little bit. And then they let him tell his little tale. Then they ask you, then they ask him, do you think we just got you down here for nothing? We've been doing this for about 20 years. Them folk ain't coming to bother you unless they know they got the goods on you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Amen. So, whatever things, so you think on these things, whatever things are true, whatever things are honorable, whatever things is just, just, right, fair, that's of God. Huh? Whatever thing is honorable, when you're lifting or building, building people up, those are things of God. When, you, when it's honorable, when a person does something that's honorable, congratulate them. Huh? Your day coming, whatever is, is just, whatever is pure, Huh? When you know a person or this situation is, 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 is pure from the heart, that's of God. That's why he's telling you to think on these things, study these things, uh, do these things. Whatever thing is lovely, lovely, beautiful, huh? honest, these are the things you think on. As I t I'm telling you now, I had me get, get back spirit. I sit around for days thinking of a way to get you. Okay. You thank God for deliverance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thinking of a way to. I ain't no killer, <laughs> but don't push me. <laughs> I'm telling you. Ooh, Lord have mercy. No, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. Amen. I can tell y'all some stories. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> tell y'all some stories. Whatever things are commendable, don't you think on those things? If there are any moral es excellence, anybody, everybody know what moral excellence is? Meaning that uh, you're gonna always do right all the time. Moral excellence. They get, there's no guile found in you. Now, check this out. I'm going to be honest. There's some guile found in every one of y'all sitting in these chairs. I thought they were going to say, you too, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But, we, but check this out. We don't, we, don't, we don't concentrate or focus on what's wrong with me. Somebody should have been, somebody should have been shouting, y'all. We're not focusing on what's wrong with me. I'm focusing on what God says about me. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. I believe what it says. I am who it says I am. I can be who it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do. And I can have what it says I can have. This is my Bible. So that's why we say that. That's why we say it. So we can get it down in our spirit. So you can know that you are more than 
who you are. Nobody, oh, can I help y'all with this right here? You, you don't, nobody has to know your name for you to be great. Yeah, I'm going to say it again for the people way in the back. Nobody has to know your name. Your name don't have to be in, night, in lights for you to be great. Only, oh, God. It's about your impact. Many of us would never be famous. And more than 500 people going to ever know our name. But impact those who, are you around, who you are around. Praise him, y'all. Mother, Mother Holy goes over here looking at me like, hey, hey. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go here to my seat. Mother Holy Ghost was not looking at him like that. Mother Holy Ghost was saying, if I can go sit back in my chair while you finish Amen. Come on and give it up for Bishop and our, both of our ministers on tonight. Amen. For our Facebook and YouTube partners, thank you all so much for your attention. Amen. But this is critical in the season that we're in, that we understand that these, these things are needed. Amen. To be successful in this life, we have to have the fruit of the Spirit in operation. Amen. Amen. Come on and give it up one more time. Facebook and YouTube, thank you once again. Our giving platforms are on the screen. Please be generous in your giving. Amen. And sow a seed into the ministry that we can continue to further the gospel. Amen. And get this gospel out across the airways. We thank you so much for those that have been given. We appreciate you and we pray over your seeds all the time. Expect a harvest. Expect a harvest. Amen. Amen. So we'll be back here Sunday morning. It's Father's Day. So we're going to be celebrating fathers. Amen. Amen. So um, be with us Sunday morning, 9 o'clock a.m. We'll be live on Facebook. Amen. We love you. Go with God and God will go with you. Good night. Amen. Everybody good?